We have some guests you guys may be familiar with um, from not only uh, a big event, a big crazy feat that they accomplished, but also they both have really great YouTube channels. Um, so at this time, let me click the right button. <laughs> uh, I would like to welcome Sean and Eric to the show. Welcome, guys. Hi. Hey. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, so you guys are in an interesting location and you all have great stories to tell, but there's kind of one story I think a lot of us are very interested in. So why don't you, you hit us with that? And then um, as we go, you know, I'll probably interrupt you 10 times with other questions. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, not a problem. Thanks for having us. Um, but yeah, I guess we kind of really want to talk about the hypermile. Uh, we get a ton of questions about it all the time. What is a hypermile, um, first of all, for yeah. those that don't know it? Yeah, why don't you tag on that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, I'll answer my own <laughs> question. Um, so, so hypermiling is essentially it, well, it's not unique to EVs, but but uh, EV owners have sort of made it this subculture within Tesla and other electric vehicles. It's essentially driving a car as efficiently as possible. And so, what we sort of set off to do, um, people have done this with a Model S, but yep. at the time, no one had ever done it with a Model Three. So back in May we decided to uh, try and um, set up the, the the Model 3 that we rented on Turo from a friend of ours here in Denver. <laughs> and, <laughs> Not your typical Turo rental. Right. right. And uh, we, we we pumped up the tires, uh, 5 PSI above yep. recommended. We put the aero wheels on. We turned off the AC in like 90 degree temperatures. And yeah. we, we set off on a journey to see how far we could drive the Tesla Model 3 on a single charge. Many of you probably know it's 310 miles rated range by Tesla. Um, we ended up taking it quite a bit further, which was really cool. So, so yeah. hypermiling is basically driving it as far as possible. As efficiently as far. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, quite an experience. It ended up being 33 hours. Uh, thir 34, 34 I hours. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty miserable. We thought turning off the AC would actually improve everything, but came to find out afterwards it actually wouldn't have mattered because the Model 3 system only has one compressor, whereas Model S and X have two. So that one compressor was turning on anyway for the battery. So mm -hmm. we kind of suffered for nothing. Yeah, we, but um, I guess maybe the thing that we should we should share that maybe a lot of people don't have insight into is that mm -hmm. there was a lot of planning. Oh yeah, a that, lot of that planning. took place before this this event. We yep. we got some sponsors. Yep. Right. Some local businesses here in town. And uh, we we so we helped kind of cover the, our cost. Uh, mm -hmm. We we entered the um, the the hypermile attempt into the Guinness Book of World Records, yep. which we can we can touch on a little bit later. Um, and we had we had the business logos on the side of the car. Even one of the uh, d detail shops tinted the Model 3 windows. Yeah, that uh, really helped. <laughs> it, it made a big difference, I think. Yeah. Um, you, you got some food and some fans, right? Foods, fans, snacks, Yelp, drinks. Uh, and we actually had David, he's in a lot of my videos too. He came out, brought some food for us a couple times, some wet towels because it was so hot. Yeah. We, um, at, at one point, so I would text the, the owner of the model three, she would access the app to, to be able to see, uh, what the interior cabin temperature was. And at one point, what was it like? A hundred and one Oh eight, one Oh seven. Yeah. Yeah. Something like a hundred and a hundred and ten. It was uh, ridiculous. Fahrenheit. Yeah. We, we were suffering for science for sure. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we, we, um, we also spent quite a bit of time finding out which route would be best for us because, you know, not only did we want to find the route that did not have as much elevation change, but we we also wanted an area that had um, a good cell signal. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, we decided to actually live stream the whole thing and some of it kind of cut it out. But for the most part, uh, we had a pretty solid live stream the entire time. And it was fun because being such a long live stream, we were able to interact with people pretty much all around the world. We yes. had Australia, some people from China chiming in all over Europe. Um, we had people kind of all over some from South America, right? Um, there, there were yeah. some, some guys who told us that, um, their wives were wondering yeah. <laughs> why they were watching these two guys driving in a car for, for hours at a time. <laughs> yeah. Even like David said he was watching from home and said it was just kind of like addicting. Like it was kind of like a yeah. real world show. Yep. So yeah, like was, reality TV, right? Yep, That's exactly. exactly what my wife said. We, so, so we live streamed the whole thing and because we live streamed the whole thing, there were some interesting things that came up that we actually got on camera. Yeah. Right. We almost got in uh, a, a couple of wrecks. A couple. We had a truck at one point. Yep. Uh, we I, had some animals. Yes. Encounters. A rabbit. 
there was this rabbit that we um, we we saw several times around dusk, and um, we happened to be driving by this rabbit that was sort of grazing in in the grass, and then all of a sudden it sort of got freaked out and tried to run across the street in front of our car. And uh, we managed to swerve out of the way to avoid killing this bunny. But because we were live streaming, there were a lot of people online that that made up these stories. Yeah. This this character, essentially, <laughs> this rabbit that that people nicknamed Bob, B-O-B. And it was an acronym for Big Oil Bunny. So this, this so, sort of story developed that um, – Big oil companies had hired this bunny to detract us from our mission of hypermiling yeah. the Model 3. And then the truck played into that too. Mm-hmm. Like the truck was sent. It was, it was pretty funny. It kept us pretty entertained actually. But it, I didn't really sleep that much. No. No, but I think it did help, though, that we yeah. had some moments of rest. So we Definitely. would alternate. You know, we would go for, what, four or six hours at a time yep. and then and then trade spots. Yeah. And then one of us would rest. The other one would would get behind the wheel and, and drive. Um, what else? What else did we we see? We the, 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 the fishnet. Yeah. So we actually thought of this kind of ahead of time. Uh, and Sean was able to bring a fishnet and David was throwing burritos in it at one we point. We got Jimmy John's sandwiches. We got Jimmy John's um, drinks. Drinks, yeah. Uh-huh. That was pretty fun. And we just tried to minimize every stop we could. So so, so. as to not stop completely, we, we had this long aluminum fishnet that you would use to catch fish in, in rivers. And we rolled down the window, we stuck out the, the fishnet and David was on the side of the road and we probably slowed down to what, like three miles per hour, five miles Something per like hour. That, yeah. And, uh, we caught the food and the drinks in the fishnet and then pulled the fishnet back in to, um, to partake in the goodness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, there are some fun events, but like overall, I think we were averaging about like what 104 watts per mile. Um, it varied um, depending on the time of the day and everything, but we were I think right about 104. I remember I'll look it up here in just a second, but I remember for most of the trip being at 110 mm-hmm. watt hours per mile. Let's see what it was. It was yeah, it was 110 watt hours per yep. mile by the end of the trip. So calculating all that, um, we should have gone further. We thought we were going to yeah. actually break the Model S record, which was six hundred and was it six hundred and sixty or seventy Something miles? Like yeah. yeah. So it was looking pretty good based on the watt hours per mile that we were actually going to break that record. Mm-hmm. But um, we were we were surprised. It was just probably around eleven. So we yeah. we started the trip at. Three in the afternoon, we went through the night, through the morning, afternoon, and then around 11 or 12 at night, yep. we started getting the um, the chiming from the car that the battery power was running low. Yep. What happened at, at that point? Uh, I think we ended up getting, what was it, about 10 more laps, which was a mile loop that we were doing. And then as close almost to the superchargers as possible, that's where we actually kind of died out. Um, so it said car was shutting down. Yeah. So we immediately kind of beelined it for the superchargers and officially died probably 500 feet Yeah, from them. It was yeah. ridiculously close. Our route was intentionally near the supercharger yep. because we wanted to run it as low as possible, yep. but not have an issue where we had to call a, a flatbed. Token. Yeah. The idea the whole time was not to totally kill it. Um, so that's why based on our calculations, we thought we'd have a lot more and we're maybe thinking maybe like the battery management system wasn't accounting for everything because it was just a ridiculously low watt hours per mile. Um, but we ended up only pulling about 66 Mm -hmm. kilowatt hours out of that pack. Yeah. Um, and I know when you did it, Ben, you got pretty much right on 75. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That was actually a question I had for you guys because, and Mm -hmm. I even talked to Tesla after that. I'm like, yeah, why? And, and so did you guys ever get an official answer as to what or why that is? Yeah. When, when when we went to the service center after the car got serviced, um, which we can get into a little bit later, but, um, the car wouldn't charge after we got done with the trip, even plugging it in and leaving it at the supercharger overnight, it wasn't taking a charge. So we did actually have to have it flatbedded to, uh, the service center. 
what one of the technicians said was that um, the sort of background um, uh, air, uh, uh, compressor, mm -hmm. the AC compressor, um, was utilizing some of that remaining energy in the background, but it wasn't reporting on the actual uh, watt hours per mile or usage of energy. So mm -hmm. we think it was just lost in in you know in the background. Battery management system. Um, it's probably kind of like because phantom so drain, off. right? Yes. Like phantom drain, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And we think we well, we kind of learned after the fact that that system was on, probably cooling down the battery when it was so hot during the day. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's probably what ate up a good chunk of that would be my guess. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if you could do it on, cause when I did my test, I mean, so you guys intentionally were doing it to go the distance. I was yeah. trying to show a real world case of what happens if you just run out and you have to get towed. So that's what I, that was where I was going. And, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I got, I think almost spot on 75 kilowatt hours. And I think, what does yep. the battery have? 78. It's just a um, little bit so more than that. I've heard conflicting things. I heard it has like 80 almost, but it has about 78 usable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Something around I, there. Yep. And for me, the big thing was I stopped for 45 minutes and ate a sandwich. And mm -hmm. in that time lost over 20 miles or I think 21 miles of range. Wow. And Crazy. it was a clear day. This was in the desert near Palm Springs and it was around 65, 70 degrees, like not exorbitantly oh, hot i mean you'd think that would be kind of ideal conditions uh but yeah something happened there i don't know i don't know what it was but you know i know sometimes also and you guys live in colder climates so maybe you've seen it i don't get this but when when um like the battery will kind of adjust right like if you don't charge it all the way or all these kind of things like what it reports on the screen might not be what it actually has because it's mm -hmm. trying to read like your behaviors and stuff so i don't know if i actually lost that range or if it was just kind of a, an adjustment of of, you know the situation I put it put it in what, what the technician also added that he he thought that maybe the car might do better in cooler temperatures yeah. right sure. it's not working as hard to try and try and cool down the battery pack mm -hmm. so we had we had kind of kicked around the idea of in some time in the future uh, doing it in a, in a cooler climate however I think maybe winter probably wouldn't be best because it yeah. would have the opposite effect. Uh, you know, Keeping I, it warm. I prob probably Eric as well. When when we're driving in in cold weather, we, we I think the energy use is just even higher yeah. than in the summertime. Oh, totally. So so probably not best for us to do it in in mm -hmm. winter here in Denver. Yeah. The yeah. one thing we did learn too, though, is the Model Three, the way it's designed, is actually different than S and X in terms of it's going to take a lot of that heat from braking and stuff like that and regen and help to heat the batteries. So and uh, maybe 65 degree temperature, I would imagine maybe we can get a couple more yeah. miles out of that. Yeah, I know that looking at data from all the people that use Tesla, we've done studies on this where, yeah, like when it gets over, I think, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you see a, a significant degradation or not degradation, but, you know, like a limit or inefficiency yeah. um, really is the, the measure we use typically. And you, but you see an even more severe one when the temperature gets lower. So, yeah, definitely like hotter temperatures do have an effect from the data I've seen. But colder temperatures tend to have a stronger effect on you kind of your, your, your you, we measure efficiency based on how, how many miles does the car report you have versus how, how far did you actually go? Right. Mm -hmm. So we kind of just do beginning and ending of the trip and say, okay, it, it says you use 60 miles, but you only went 30 miles. So you're like 50%, right? Yeah. So we, yeah, we, so we see a more, uh, greater negative effect in the colder climates. So yeah, there's probably a sweet spot there of like, yeah, maybe 60, may, maybe even a little lower, maybe like 50. Yeah. You know? Yep. Exactly. <laughs> So that's going to be kind of maybe round two is try to figure out exactly where that is. See what we can do. <laughs> Man, I can't believe you guys are going for it again. What did you do for bathroom breaks? We, um, we did stop. Yeah, we stopped. There was like a hotel right there and um, we would just kind of run in there real quick. Um, when we stopped and got a little bite to eat for breakfast, we yep. used the bathroom there. It was a, it was a one mile loop around these hotels and that's yep. where the supercharger is at. So it was, it was a one, we, we know how many times we, we went in the circle <laughs> because it was a one mile loop. So 606 times <laughs> yeah. we circled this, this, uh, these hotels and uh, that's how we got to know the bunny so well. And 
<laughs> we, we, we started to see some, some trendings around particular times. So yeah. we, 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 when we swapped seats, that's when we sort of took the opportunity to use the restroom and we, we yeah. didn't, we didn't have catheters, uh, contrary to, <laughs> to the conspiracy theories, <laughs> no bottles, none of that. Oh man. That would, yeah. Cause I, I was kind of thinking about that when you guys set off on that, I'm like, Oh man, what's going on here? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, oh, um, hey, hey, yeah. And I'm this, thankful this, you guys are doing it instead of me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go that route. And interestingly, this was the first, this was the longest that Eric and I had ever spent together. I think before yeah, that, we maybe, maybe got together for, for lunch, maybe an hour, yeah, yeah. But but uh, it was the longest we had ever spent together, and and so there was this sort of question in the back of my mind, like, oh my gosh, is <laughs> he's crazy? Is, yeah, is, <laughs> is this guy gonna be weird or what? No, but, <laughs> but it, it worked out really, really well. I yeah, mean. I I mean I've done a lot of road trips. Have you? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Like, I mean, normally if I'm not driving, I'm asleep in the car, but because of like the live stream and the chat coming through, it was very engaging almost like the entire time. And I think that helped. Yeah. The, the, um, the one thing that I think caught me by surprise during this 34 hours was, um, how many people not only were online mm-hmm. watching the live stream, but at certain points, you know, there's, there's the ability cause of the live chat, it's got the ability to, um, do donations Mm-hmm. That that really struck me as surprising as, as these complete strangers who were watching this and had sort of bought into what we were doing were donating yeah. money. Strangers donating money to these to these two guys that they, you know, didn't know personally, but maybe felt like they got to know over the course of the 34 hours. And by yeah. the end, it was like you know, a stream of of donations <laughs> from various people. Coming. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a couple of them actually were referral code users that mm-hmm. I saw. Pete was one of them. You're there, Pete. Thank you. We appreciate you. Um, but yeah, it was it was insane. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen anything like that, so it was it was kind of fun to experience. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm I'm so bad. I I do all the all my live streams, and I rarely actually because I have it going on Crowdcast, and that's where I'm like focused. I rarely look at the YouTube stuff. Um, uh-huh. I was I did the earnings call, I think, and um, we all know Dan from What's Inside. Uh, yeah, yeah. He went he went and did a hundred dollar donation, which I think is the <laughs> max or something yeah. like that. And I didn't even see it, and so people were like like really giving me shit for it. And he he was texting <laughs> me like, "Hey, go look at my question." I'm like, "Oh, okay, okay." So that is yeah. a pretty pretty wild thing. And actually today, I don't know if we what we've got at all, but all of the super chat donations from today's show are going to the electric auto association so if anyone's yep. watching and wants to donate i i don't think you can donate unfortunately if you're outside of the u.s um people were tell, saying that earlier but if you are watching and you want to you didn't buy a ticket to TeslaCon, that's fine um you know if you do want to sell send a donation just do so by clicking the little heart hands i think it looks like um yep. icon there all right, so let's uh, let's hop over to a question real quick, um, and then we can kind of keep riffing on some stuff. Pablo asks, "Any plans of hypermiling the new Roadster?" <laughs> um, uh, without giving too much away, there's going to be some crazy things with that car. There, there's going to be some crazy things. Maybe. Yeah, I, uh, you know, yeah. I, I remember I re- someone asked us that on the live stream when we were doing that, yep. uh, when we were doing the Model Three thing, and. I, I pretty quickly for myself said, no, definitely not. But, you know, I've had a lot of time to think about the hypermiling thing and, and the longer that it's been from the last one, the more I've warmed up to this. It's, it's, it it reminds me a lot of like when my wife had, had our kids, she's like, no, after, after I'm (laughs) never having another child, I'm never getting pregnant. And then it's like, oh, well, you know, the longer that it goes, it's like, maybe we should have another one. It's the same thing. So, so, you know, 600, 600 miles times two, that's 1200 miles of hypermiling. We're, we would be looking at like, like, like three or four days, right? Probably. Yeah, it, that'd be like double what we just did. Yes. So it'd be like 60 something hours. So yeah, probably like a good three, four days. Yeah, <laughs> man. That, 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 that would be nuts. It would be cool if you could do it, let's say from um, Seattle to San Diego or something, right? If it were like a yeah. scenic drive, not just going in circles the whole time. <laughs> well, see, that the reason we did choose a circle is because there was a lot of kickback on previous ones about starting at a high elevation and ending at a low one. Yeah. And we wanted to do a circle so that anything we went down, we went up. Yep. Um, but yes. yeah, I can't imagine doing 1,200 laps right now. 
So maybe in a year or two. <laughs> Once that amnesia kind of sets in, yeah. And so, yep. so uh, Sean, what do you have five kids now? Is that? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thankfully, only two. And, and I think we're both in agreement, my wife and I, that two is enough. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. All right, next question comes to, for, comes to us from James Reach. Um, he asks, were both of you in the Model 3? Wouldn't you have had better range if there were only one person in the car? Theoretically, yes. Um, but at the same point, having somebody there in case we needed to switch sooner than later, if one of us was really starting to get drowsy or anything, was super helpful. Have somebody there to kind of manage chat, super helpful. And just to have somebody to talk to. Yeah. I think that was the big thing, is just to not sit by yourself for 33 plus hours. I attempted uh, a hyper mile attempt uh, maybe a couple of weeks before we did this mm -hmm. one on my own where I started in Denver and just drove east. And um, it was really, really hard going solo. Like yeah. there were some points, it, you know, it was, I felt like I was like going through, uh, you know, PTSD, you know, I'm not going to make it. I, I, I should just stop now. Like, it's almost yeah. like running a marathon. It's probably a better example. You know, I went through these periods by myself where I was like talking to myself and, yeah. you know, thinking that I'm not going to make it. I need to pull over. And so having two people in the car definitely makes more sense in my opinion. In reality, mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably, you know, like 200 pounds, 200 pounds is n not going to make that much of a difference. Yeah. You know, 200 pounds extra. I don't, I don't think that's going to impact the range of the car that significantly. Yeah. I, that's what I was thinking too. I mean, maybe it would give you a little bit more, but but it was, it isn't meaningful. I mean, the car is so powerful. It's probably insignificant really. So yeah, the pros definitely outweighed the cons in that situation. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the goal wasn't necessarily, yeah. Cause someone else did a hyper mile thing. Did you guys see where it was autonomous yes. or something on a track? Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know what that was. I mean, it's not clearly not the same thing, but I mean, that's kind of like, cause there were, there was not a person in the car, right? Do you guys have details on right. that? I don't, I don't remember all yeah, the details. It was, it was yeah. a dummy. It yeah. was like a spaceman dummy. They called Starman. They put the model three on autopilot mm -hmm. and they had another Tesla in front of it and they were on a closed track. Yep. And I think if I remember correctly, they got the same kilowatt hours. It was like mm -hmm. 66 kilowatt hours, but they managed to travel a little bit further. Yeah. Um, be maybe because it was on a closed track. I want to say it was like 618 miles. I think they crossed over the 100 kilometer uh, barrier. Yeah, the thousand. Yeah. 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 Sorry. The thousand kilometer yep. barrier. Um, uh, but it was like 618. Yeah, it was soon miles. after that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't really that, but that was kind of a weird scenario, right? So. Like not yeah, not exactly they also a real had world like test. A device in there to keep tugging on the wheel. Oh um, right. Which now I don't know if that would work because they've disabled a lot of that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't haven't really heard a lot about that, like the details on it. So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So next question comes to us from Michael Young. Um, are there any hypermiling tips that can be used for daily driving? Uh, don't do any hard accelerations. We, we, we did turn the car on chill mode. Yep. So we had it on chill mode. Um, when there was a stop sign, we gave us more than ample enough time to let off of the accelerator and let the regen do most of that for us. Um, stuff like that, I think, really helped. We had the aero wheels on, however, at that yep. speed. I'm not sure how much that helped. Yeah. Um, in, inflating the PSI a little bit higher, I yep. think can make a big difference. Of course that, you know, it's, it's sort of a give and take, like you're going to wear your tires in, yep. in an, in an un, unusual way if you do it for a long period of time. But, um, you know, the, the, the HVAC was another interesting one. Like yep. I think if you turn the AC off when you didn't need it and just ran the fan, that probably could, could make a difference in some temperatures. Um, but uh, the, the chill mode probably makes a big difference. Kind of yep. keeps keeps you straight laced there. Um, I did some some testing before the the hyper mile, where I compared driving on autopilot and driving off of autopilot manually. And you know, it, though it was sort of a, a limited sample set, I didn't really see a big difference between mm. autopilot versus not. Yeah, I bet that would be mostly, I think, like you said, Eric, the acceleration, like hitting it from a stop yeah. is going to eat a lot more energy, right? Probably when you're cruising, it doesn't matter autopilot or not nearly as much. 
Yeah, I think probably once you get up to speed, it might be pretty negligible on that. But yeah, yeah. getting up to that speed is, I think, the kicker on that. Right, right. That's where you're going to chew it up. All right, next question comes from Max Q. Um, are you planning any other type of bucket list adventure in a Tesla? Nürburgring in Germany, being a U2 chase car, et cetera. Uh, chase car might happen sooner than later. Yeah. Just saying. Drop, drop <laughs> um, um, uh, I don't know. There have been a lot of cool things. I would love to top speed the Roadster. Yeah. Uh, I have some plans on that. Um, 250 is pretty darn fast, but I would still like to go for it. Um, yeah. I don't know where you would even, you, you'd need a special track, right? So like Conan Seg actually shut down a highway in Las Vegas and that's where they did their speed run. And that was kind of my idea and, um, kind of just play off that and maybe get some other supercars at Conan Seg, maybe a Bugatti and just all just drag top racing. speed them. Yeah. That that'll be a good test. I'm very curious because Elon did say that it will, you know, win on all yeah. performance mm-hmm. metrics, and yep. so so yeah. that, that that's a that's a big one. Um, all right, let's see. Next question comes again from Michael. Um, did you have any outside support while doing this? Someone watching and monitoring. Um. So I know, like my parents were texting me. They actually showed up at the end. Um, they were watching, but I think David helped a lot. Your wife came out. Yeah, she, yeah, she was, um, she was, um, yeah, she was watching online and trying to respond to people who had questions yep. that she knew answers to. We, we did have some members of the Denver Tesla club come yep. out and they had like signs yeah. <laughs> and were cheering us on like, like, you know, like we were champions or something like that. So that was cool. And then we also had some other Denver Tesla club members mm-hmm. at the very end yep. come and greet us with like champagne cupcakes. And, yeah. It was, it was, um, and yeah. we're calling some of this as I'm talking about it because it was, it was kind of a blur towards the very end. <laughs> I don't know if that was sleep <laughs> deprivation or if it was just excitement or what. A little but, bit of both. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that was really huge. Actually, one of the Tesla Club members that came out had a sign and even had like some protein drinks and brought a bunch of snacks too for us. Uh, Sharon, she's awesome. Mm-hmm. She helped out a bunch. Um, mm-hmm. It was really cool to see like the outpour from the Denver Tesla Club. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we, we did have – did you mention the chase car because we had um, another member yeah. come – and drive behind us yep. to kind of like, you know, support us and encourage mm-hmm. us. So that was kind of cool to have a Tesla, uh, you know, once or yeah. twice, uh, to, to come and just ride with us. You're like a pace car almost. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, you mentioned using the AC. Did you drive without using the AC? Yes. Uh, how much of an impact does AC have on the battery? So maybe to expand on this, cause you already kind of answered that, you mentioned that the Model S and X have a different system. Yes. So maybe just dig into what you guys' thoughts are on that. Like, it didn't sound like it had an impact here. What would or what you, what difference do you think it would be with an S or an X versus the three in terms of running the AC? I think if we were doing it in a Model S or X the same time, not using the AC would have helped us because they are different compressors and different like systems. But the Model 3 kind of simplified it, combined it all in one. So there's really only one AC compressor in the 3, from my understanding that we talked with them. So I definitely think having it in the 3, now that I know that, I'm probably going to be a little bit more prone to using it in daily driving because I know it's not going to affect it as much as, say, an S or an X. Maybe that's, maybe that's a test that someone could do. Yeah. You know, taking the same course – turning on AC, Mm -hmm. driving it for a few miles or 10 miles or whatever, and then turning it off and seeing if they get the same watt hours per mile. Uh, maybe it's different, but uh, it, it, it appears like they've, they've, the architecture of the model three is quite a bit simpler than the S and X. Yeah, that makes sense. And and again, it goes back to the question of having two people in the car versus one. I wonder if it really matters. You know, I wonder if you would even see a noticeable difference. You know, I know in gas cars, it's been a common thing we've always known is like, oh, don't run the AC or whatever or heat. It'll, Mm -hmm. you know, but then now I, I, I do remember Zach and Jesse doing something about heat and the amount of energy used from the seat warmers versus the actual like central heat and that being a huge difference. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on that? I mean, you know, it's that time of year it's getting there. You guys are both wearing jackets, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Sorry. We're in the garage. Tried heating it up a little bit ahead of time, but it's still kind of nippy. Um, I mean, when I'm in my Model S, if it's just me, I normally don't run the air. 
like uh-huh. in the winter. I just do the heated seat and the steering wheel because I don't need to heat up the whole cabin for just myself. Um, sometimes I can get cold feet. That's the only downside. But I normally don't turn on the air myself. I um, The only time that I turn off the heat in the winter is when I'm like getting low on range and I'm not mm. quite sure if I'm going to make it to a charging station, which, Fair um, enough. <laughs> you know, fortunately uh, I've turned over a new leaf and I'm not doing that as much as I'm not pushing the battery as hard as I used to. But, um, I I'm, I'm quite particular in that. I feel like the, the HVAC that the heat coming out of the vents warms me up better than, than the seat warmers. Sometimes I have mm. both running and, yeah. um, you know, if, if, if it's not an issue of range, then, uh, sometimes I just feel like they, they do different things for, for my body. Yeah. And I mean, I will say like when I leave in the morning and when I leave work coming home, it's not that long of a drive, but normally I will precondition the car for yeah. uh, 10, 15 minutes. So I guess by the time I get in it, the cabin's already kind of like room temp, if you will. Sure. So let me ask, um, about that a little bit because I just went camping with my son and we actually use camper mode for the first time. So have you guys done that? And I'm curious what your range loss or, you know, cause obviously it uses energy. Like, tell me what your experiences were like there. Cause this was my first time, uh, doing it, you know, for, for me being outdoorsy yeah. is going in the ocean, but you know, this is, <laughs> <laughs> so this was the first time. So tell me what so you I guys, mean, I really haven't used camper, like the new official camper mode. I've used the right. old kind of like work around. And that it was just during the summer, though, so I really didn't see anything. Uh, oh, okay. I haven't done it. In the I I have an, a, f- a kind of a funny story that happened recently. Um, you know, uh, real estate sometimes requires that I have really strange working hours, and there was this one instance a couple of weeks ago where I don't know I wasn't out too late, but but I had come home. My wife had fallen asleep, and we have a um, like a lock on the inside of the garage door, so you can lock it from the inside of the house. Well, I, I pull in my car, back it in, plug it in, and I go in to open the, the, the door to the house, and the door is locked. So I'm calling my <laughs> wife and texting her. I'm like, you locked me out of the house. Can't believe you. Uh, so she never responds, and I'm like, okay, screw it. I'm, I'm going camper mode. Uh, so I lay down the back seats. I actually have um, an air mattress in the garage, and then I carry a – um, a down sleeping bag in my car. So I, I, I did have the, the car plugged in, but I laid down the back seats, opened up the, uh, the air mattress and got in the, the sleeping bag. And I don't remember this specific number, but it was certainly above 300 watt hours per, per mile. Once I woke up, don't remember what it was prior to that. And I think it was pretty cold outside. So it was high anyway, but, um, I have used it and uh, may- maybe not in the most ideal situation, but at least I had <laughs> had that ability to. Because I do remember an instance like that before, where that happened. Uh, I was up in the mountains. I was going to stay the night there, but decided to come home, and the door was locked to, to get into the house. And there was no camper mode at mm. that time, and so I had to wake up like every I don't know when it turns off. I had to wake up every forty five minutes oh. to turn back on the HVAC so I wouldn't freeze to death. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I from up in my garage too. <laughs> it's a it's a pattern between us. <laughs> so mine was I didn't intend on sleeping in the car, um, but I had my son with me who's three, and the temperature was supposed to get around to like mid thirties, and so I thought, okay, that's fine, we can deal with that. But it actually got to the low twenties, and we were just not prepared, and he was not able to hang with that. Um, I mean, I, I wasn't able to hang with that. Anyway. I'm not going to just put it on him, but uh, it, uh, we we just I just literally packed up our blankets no sleeping uh we did have an air mattress but i wasn't gonna like deflate that and then put it back in the car and reinflate it and so i just threw blankets in the back and folded the seats down and hopped in there and it was fantastic we was lost the our, s or x or sorry s. yes or three the S. Yeah. And, and I brought the S. Well, my wife drives the three, so I don't even drive the three, but uh, we brought it specifically in case we needed to do this. Um, now, the challenge is my S is a 60, so it only gets uh, 200 miles tops. Um, and I was at like 78 miles or so, or maybe 70 something miles before we went to bed. And it's like 
35, 40 miles back to my house. So I'm going, uh, okay, if I lose too much here, I'm not going to be able to get back home. Um, but you know, we live in a pretty populated area, so I could probably find a charger if I had to. Uh, but yeah, we, we lost about 20 or so miles, but I'll tell you what, man, that was just from that moment on, I, I was just like, this is, this is an absolute game changer. This is truly incredible. Um, I don't understand, like, I don't think people realize these kind of things, um, until you actually witness them, you know? I, I know you've used this feature because I think I've seen a photo, but but when your kids are in the car and you need to go get something, this feature allows you to keep the HVAC running so that you're, you know, it doesn't yep. get too hot or cold in the car. And I've used that as well. And that is sort of like a super practical way that you can leverage that feature if you have children and or pets. Yeah, pets. As well. I see that with dogs all the time at superchargers. People put a sign up saying don't break the window. The dog's fine. He's listening to music and nice and toasty kind of thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. hundred percent for me. It's, um, I don't leave him in the car when I'm going into a place that often, but it's more he'll fall asleep in the car and then yeah, we yeah. come home and I'll pull in the garage. I'll close the garage. There's no emissions. So I don't have to worry about that. And then yep. I'll, I'll, I'll jump out and we kind of have a, a patio right next to the garage. I just leave the door open. So eventually he wakes up, starts crying, but I keep, you know, everything cool and nice. And one of the things that's kind of a bummer is that the model three doesn't have this yet. So mm -hmm. with the model three, I would have to actually go back and check every, I think it's like 30 30 minutes it'll shut off um yeah. which kind of sucks but you know it, it's it's still still fine so yeah i mean there's lots of ways that you can use this feature even if it's not literally camping yeah so a question here from james reach whatever happened with the guinness book world records um so we've been following up with them quite a lot and i guess there have been some other attempts that have been submitted and they are still looking everything over Mm. Um, so we haven't heard anything back yet and we're you submitted, getting it you submitted late it now. not too long after we did the, right. the attempt. Yep. We, there, we needed some, we had the video proof cause we were filming the entire thing live stream, yep. but we, you also had GoPros. done some Gro GoPros inside of the cabin yep. and then you, we needed some uh, people to fill out witness, witness forms. Yeah. Yep. yep. So we had to gather some of that together, but it's been months now. Yeah. So it's been something I try to check in every now and then. I look online all the time and nobody else has received it yet. So yeah. I, to be honest, don't know what the holdup is. I've never actually submitted anything like this before. So I'm not sure the whole process. They do have like where you can have people come out and witness everything. But to have that and have it like said on the spot is like $10,000, $20,000. Yeah. So – uh, we didn't opt for that, so I guess this is kind of the next best thing. But hopefully we'll have some news on that to share, I would hope, by year's end at the very latest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember um, it, something I was doing, not a hypermile thing, but something else. And I remember looking at it going, huh, I wonder how if I could do this for the Guinness Book of World Records. And I saw mm -hmm. what it took, and I said, nah, never mind. I'm way too lazy for that. <laughs> I was yeah. just like, yeah. Uh, I think that's the big thing is that that was another huge planning part because you have to make sure you have unaffiliated people, do witness statements, and right. there's just a lot that goes into that. So we did the research on the front end so that we could at least have that kind of lined up. But right. yeah, unfortunately, nothing yet, but hopefully there's something soon. Now, have you guys experienced any of the winter uh, madness going on that people are? I don't know if this is fake news or what, but the like door handles freezing on the Model 3 or any of that. I have seen that. I haven't experienced it on Model 3 Limited for my though, but like Model S never right. had an issue. Ne um, never on the Model S. I did actually, I happened to be at the um, Tesla delivery center last night helping uh, deliver uh, uh, a car for a referral of mine. And I ran into to another member of the Denver Tesla club. And he said that he actually had that same problem where he, he tried to push in the door handle, but, mm -hmm. but the inside was frozen. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so yeah. I asked him uh, if he parks outside and he's like, yep, parked outside. 
uh, don't don't have a garage. And so it seems like um, I know that was the same case with Fred Lambert from Electric. He doesn't have a garage either. And that that video that he posted uh, definitely showed that you had trouble pushing in the door because it had iced on the inside. So mm-hmm. I, I, I wonder if that's maybe maybe uh, something that was overlooked or, you know, because mm. it's. I would, I'd be a bit surprised if they don't have a, a solution for it, though. Yeah, I find it weird, though, that we didn't hear anything about it last year. Because Model 3s had already started being delivered. Um, mostly in California, though, Mostly right? in California, yeah. but I know, like, Zach and Jesse, they right. got theirs. I don't know if they yeah. park outside much. But I, I know we saw them kind of all over, and we never heard anything. But, I mean, I guess it depends if it's more of, like, a wet snow. Yes, totally. That kind of, like, seeps in and then freezes. Um, I've actually thought of a couple ways to try to mimic that and test it. Maybe I'll play around with that in the future. Um, cause yeah. I'm curious just to see on that. Yeah. I mean, I, it's something I'd never heard of with a model S or X. So when I started yeah. hearing this and obviously I don't, you know, we don't get that kind of weather here in, Cal- in San Diego. So, um, mm-hmm. ha- another question, this one <laughs> is coming from YouTube. Um, have you guys seen the bunny since? um i don't really go out there that often but i mean we've texted each other pictures every now and then of like a bunny been like there's a bunny outside my house he's coming um it's still a running joke for sure i i I, every time i I try not to go back to that area just because i i do have a little bit of ptsd from from doing 606 uh circles around that lap but uh yeah i haven't i haven't seen a I haven't been back to that area. Actually, we did, fun fact, just have a bunny in the garage that was jumping up (laughs) into the wheel well of David's car. So we set up cameras in the garage because we found a bunch of droppings and we saw it like we were trying to figure out which car it was hanging out (laughs) under. And yeah, it was like jumping up into like the wheel well, like kind of like Mm. on top of the tire, just kind of hanging out. Um, Was it trying to get warm or something? Yeah, it was just a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just bunnies. I guess it doesn't help that we have uh, the garage door <laughs> sort of cracked to to run the charging cable out to my car. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not back in here. Yeah, he'll get That's, out eventually. See, so now, now you guys need to make merch for this. You need to have a little plush bunny. <laughs> <Bother>. <laughs> yeah. That'd be that'd be awesome, man. All right, so uh, what else is going on? What do, what do you guys have coming up? Um, we're out of the questions here, so kind of free uh, freestyle now. So what what else is going on in your guys' neck of the woods? Um, I don't know. There's a I have a bunch of big projects I'm still working on, but those take time, obviously. Um, next year's looking to be really good. Um, you, I'm trying to decide what I want to leak and what i don't want to leak sorry <laughs> yeah you, 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 you've definitely got some exciting uh, uh, to to quote elon you've got one of the best product roadmaps <laughs> in in, nice. in in colorado for sure um <laughs> I, I'll, I'll let you think about that. Yeah, let me let me I, see what I want to leak real quick. I, I've been kicking around the idea, which I did a video on recently, of of whether to buy a Model X. I think that's probably the next the next step in terms of Tesla. Um, I, you know, I've got 150, almost 155 thousand miles on my Model S now. Um, I think that instead of the Model Three, the Model Three is great. It's amazing. Yeah. I've driven it on a couple of occasions. Of course, spent 34 hours in, <laughs> in in one straight. But um, the the Model Three is great. But I don't know if it's good for for my family. You know, family yeah. of four. And I've got some business ambitions that I think I'd like to use the Model X for. So I think I, I think the Model X is probably the next step for me in terms of size. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a taller guy. And so when I sit down into the model S, I, 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 I'll, I, I don't even pay attention anymore, but I always find myself going, Oh, you know, like, <laughs> cause I got to sit down so, so low into the model S. Um, but, uh, that's probably one of the next projects of mine. I'm, I'm slowly chipping away at the, at the roadster, the hundred percent discount on the roadster. Um, so I, I really would like to get that as well. And, and yeah. uh, would would be super cool to get everyone to like like all the all the roadster winners together yeah. and and do something wild and crazy. Yeah, we got to do a rally or something like that when and if they ever. I mean, so that brings up uh, the referral program. And um, Eric, you have obviously been prolific in it, you know, since the beginning. Um, most notably, the three power walls behind you. Um, yep. How is it that? <laughs> 
<laughs> I think uh, uh, so. I, I'm I'm you know very late to the game in terms of this. Um, I don't know mm-hmm. you know people that just like learned about me and my channel or anything. Like I was pretty late to the game getting on this referral thing. Um, Eric, you were there from very early on, uh, but. I haven't heard of anyone else getting them. Not Zach and Jesse, um, not Kim, you know? There have been a few that have been sent out. Um, so I guess the way it kind of worked out for me is I had gotten all uh, everything that had been awarded to me, and I was looking at buying a car, looking at transferring some of the credits, and then there was maybe the solar install that I was doing. So when they reached out about potentially having a date of March for install of these guys, which most got pushed back, yeah, uh, I had talked to them originally and told them I was interested in some adding some solar panels. So we kind of started the solar process then, and then it kind of got the power walls got delayed to like May, and then I think it was July, and then we ended up getting them like late August. And so they were pushed back a bit and I actually talked with Tesla about it. And the big thing for them was that, uh, I think a lot of the batteries were just being allocated to model three. And now that that's kind of stabilized and they've been able to do more at gigafactory starting in 2019, they're going to try to get these hopefully in the first quarter, uh, everything shipped out that had already been paid for or won. And then after the first quarter, they're going to try to go for a three to four week lead time from ordering to install. Yeah. So that's what I heard. They're as well. really trying to speed that up. Um, I don't know how I was able to get so lucky on those. <laughs> it might have been because, I mean, we did get a very beefy solar install and I was kind of vocal with Tesla that I wanted the solar and I wanted these and I was going to be putting it on YouTube and I didn't really want to do like a piecemeal of a system. I kind of wanted to just go all out and just get everything done. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. Cause some of these were actually, the, we have two of the signed ones and those were from like the original program. So I had earned some from like way back in the original ones. And I think that might've helped. Yeah. Um, I think Tesla uh, pays attention to those sort of things, you know, since they yep. don't do any traditional advertising, they do look for ways to sort of leverage their community mm-hmm. to generate exposure. So, you know, it may or may not have been the case, but, um, I think it's smart on Tesla's part, in my opinion, to, uh, capitalize on, on an opportunity like this. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the fact that you were buying solar, I'm sure like oh, definitely a was massive, in- a massive array too. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. Like- and a half kilowatt hour system kilowatts yeah yeah, kilowatt hour system so i mean we have 51 panels so and it looks like next year we're probably going to add a fourth array you you did a video recently uh Mm -hmm. where you and david broke down like what it's covering and what it's not and it's quite impressive do you want to share that because it's yeah um so we excel is our actual energy provider and they kind of broke it down from what we spent this pay period or cost period versus last year at the same time. And we're, it went from like 450 a month down to about 25. Wow. So, I mean, there's a, and you're charging like three, three, three to four, three cars. cars. Um, so it's super impressive because also last year at this time, um, Scott, one of my other roommates didn't have his car. So back when it was like 450, it was really only like two cars. Yeah. Uh, so we've increased our usage a lot, but we've decreased the bill so much it's not even funny. That's awesome. Yeah, I so, know. And having these really helps out for any kind of power outage. We don't even know anymore. We get a notification from the Tesla app saying there's a power outage, that the power walls are in effect, hmm. but we don't notice anything. The TVs, the range, everything works like it should. Yeah, that's awesome. I I know um, I spent a lot of time doing the math on getting solar when I did. Um, And and actually, I was looking to buy a a battery at the same time. And that's when the referral program had like or I had just, you know, started doing it and I got the Mm -hmm. the, those right away. So I was like, I'll wait for them. Uh, It's been over two years now. I'm still like waiting. So it's like, ah, yeah. So uh my understanding from them is they're going to start reaching out to people kind of later this year, super early next year and get those kind of on the books for the first quarter of 2019. 
I, yeah. I have also had a couple of conversations with uh, various people at Tesla, and that is what they have shared with yeah. me, too. So first quarter of next year, I bet many who've been waiting for Powerwalls in particular will will get some phone calls and or yeah. emails. Yep. Yeah. Oh, awesome. I'm They're worth so. it, I assure you. They're worth it. Yeah. I, I do wonder for, you know, there probably is like, I, I probably should do the math on this, make a video on it because there probably is a point where it's overkill, right? Yeah. Like you're, you're doing a, like, you're just doing a, you know, a end of the world scenario where you just need a week's worth of power or something. Uh -huh. But there's, there's probably a point where like, Hey, if you get one, that's going to really help. Two is like really good. You're totally covered three and beyond for most families or most people, probably not necessary, you know, but it depends on your needs so yeah unless you're a prepper doomsday <laughs> prepper <laughs> yeah right, right. Case, just get a power pack <laughs> yeah um, yes so Tesla's yeah. website actually kind of breaks it down there um we went with three initially we're actually going to be doing a fourth and four is from my understanding the most they really want to install in residential mm -hmm. um but it's also in part because we do charge so many cars we try yeah, to right. collect everything as much as we can because we most of us are gone during the day, so we can't do a lot of charging then. So we try to collect it in these during the day and be able to send it to the cars at night. Um, that's yeah. a big rationale for us is just so we can try to avoid the grid at all costs. Well, one of the interesting things that you had to do because Excel requires uh, proof that yep. you actually need to use that much energy. Yep. So huh. you had to do something special, right? Yeah. So when we were sizing the solar on the house, um, we actually wouldn't have qualified for the system we did, but we had just purchased a car. Um, actually it was Scott's who lives here. And so we were able to add that. They add, I think another 200 or 250 kilowatt hours to the bill. Um, and so we were able to increase it, but I kind of just gave it away, but because of some other cars that are arriving, <laughs> um, we'll be able to increase it even more so. So 2019, uh, we'll probably be adding at least one more array. I don't think yeah. anyone's surprised that you're going to be adding another car on into the, <laughs> into the crowd. Yeah, it's at this really point, no that's surprise. not a surprise. <laughs> it's really no surprise at this point. Um, but yeah, so there'll, there'll be a car to by year end. Nice. Nice. Awesome, guys. Um, well, thank you so much for your time here. Um, people can find you guys at um, Der Eric. How do you say it? How do you say just it? Derek. It's actually Derek, just a okay. symbol. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Sean, yours is just Sean Mitchell, right? Yeah. Uh, on the on the YouTube side, I think it's Sean M. Mitchell. And Sean that M. should Mitchell? be where you can find me on Twitter as well. Cool. All right. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed that. Thank you guys for joining me. We'll be in touch soon. Maybe we'll be yep. hanging out in LA soon. Is this yes, what's going to yes. happen? I think so. I think it's going right. to happen. Okay. Well, uh, I, I will see you guys soon then. Cool. Thanks. Have man. a good one, guys. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.